Welcome back to the second part of the module circuit theory. This is N2 Industrial Electronics. Don't forget to hit that like button. Now, this is part two of AC circuit theory. And in this module, we'll be taking a look at RLC series circuits. Now, when an RLC series circuit is at resonance, what we find is that the inductive reactance equals the capacitive reactance. Our impedance is at minimum, current is at maximum, and we have unity power factor, which means cos theta is equal to one. Let's take a look at the formulas we need to know in order to calculate RLC series circuits. To determine the impedance total, it is the square root of R squared plus XC minus XL squared, depending whether it's mainly inductive or mainly capacitive. To calculate the total current, remember a series circuit, current remains the same, therefore it's V total over impedance total. To determine the power factor for a series RLC circuit, it is R total over impedance total. Remember that inductance causes current to lag the voltage. However, capacitance will cause current to lead the voltage. Now in a series RLC circuit, Voltage is divided, therefore, to calculate the volt drop across each component, we will multiply by the current, and current remains the same. So you'd have to determine the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance first. Remember, in an AC circuit theory, algebraic addition does not work. Instead, we use vectorial addition. So for an AC circuit, V total is equal to square root over VR square plus VL minus VC square, assuming it's a mainly inductive circuit. Okay, here's our example for an RLC series circuit. We have a resistor of 12 ohm, an inductor of 0 0.15 Henry, and a capacitor of 100 microfarad. A series RLC circuit containing a resistance of 12 ohms, an inductance of 0.15 Henry, and a capacitor of 100 microfarad are connected in series across a 100 volt, 50 hertz supply. And we first have to calculate the total circuit impedance. Before we can determine the impedance, we first have to calculate the inductive reactance, which is two times pi times the frequency, times the inductor of 0.15 Henry, and therefore we get 47.13 ohms. To calculate the capacitive reactance, it's one over two pi FC, therefore one over two pi times 50, times 100, times 10 to the minus six to convert microfarad to farad, therefore the capacitive reactance is 31.83 ohms. Now, XL is bigger, so this means it's a mainly inductive circuit. So therefore, when we calculate the impedance, it will be XL minus XC. When we substitute all the values into the formula, we end up with an impedance total of 19,4 ohms. In part B, calculate the total circuit current. It's a series circuit, therefore current remains the same. So current is equal to the supply voltage of 100 volts divided by the impedance total of 19,4. And we end up with a current of 5,14 amps. In part C, we need to calculate the volt drop across each component. Therefore, the volt drop across the resistor, the volt drop across the inductor, and the volt drop across the capacitor. Remember, current remains the same in a series circuit. Therefore, the current is 5,14 multiplied by the resistance of 12 ohms, multiplied by the inductive reactance of 47,13, multiplied by the capacitive reactance of 31,8. Therefore, the volt drop across each component. Now you'll notice that the sum of the volt drops does not equal the supply voltage. To determine the power factor for an RLC series circuit, it is R total over impedance total, and we end up with a power factor of 0 0.619. This is a low power factor, so therefore the efficiency will be quite poor in this circuit. To determine the phase angle, it'll be cos to the minus one multiplied by 0 0.619. Therefore, the phase angle is 51,8 degrees lagging. 
because it's a mainly inductive circuit. To determine the phase diagram, because it's mainly inductive and we have VL on the top, VC on the bottom with a phase angle of 51,8 degrees. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to hit that like button and to share these videos. Thank you.